Hey there Gophers, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into functional programming with Go, first class functions and closures. If you're into clean, modular and flexible code, this is going to be a game changer. Let's begin with first class functions. It is said, functions are first class citizens in Go. So what does it mean? It means we can treat functions like variables. We can assign them to variables, pass them as arguments, return them from other functions. Let's see it in action with this example. In this example, we're learning how to pass functions as arguments in Go, a super useful concept when you want your code to be more flexible and reusable. This function takes two parameters, name, which is just a string, and formatter, which is a function that takes a string and returns a string. Inside greet, we call the formatter function, passing in the name, and then we print the result. Now check this out. This is a function that formats the name in a formal way. It returns a polite greeting with Hello Mr. Ms. Then, in the main function, we define a casual greeting using an anonymous function, also known as a function literal in Go. It's assigned to a variable called casual greeting. Finally, we call our greet function twice, using formal greeting and casual greeting. Let's run this code. It prints the formal greeting and then the casual one. We just saw higher order functions in action, functions that take other functions as parameters. This pattern is powerful because it allows us to customize behavior, in this case, how we greet someone, without changing the core greet logic. Let's kick it up a notch by returning functions from functions. Here is our function of interest. This function, make multiplier, takes an integer parameter called factor, and it returns another function. The returned function takes an integer, called n, and multiplies it by the factor. Here we're creating two functions. Double will multiply any number by 2, Triple will multiply any number by 3. These are now reusable functions that remember the factor you gave them. We are calling these functions here. Time to test them out. Here are double of 5 and triple of 5. Here, make multiplier returns a function that multiplies a number by a specific factor. The returned function remembers the value of factor. Which brings us to our next topic, closures. Closures are functions that close over variables from their surrounding scope. In other words, they remember where they came from. Let's look at this example. In this example, we're going to explore closures again. But this time, we're building a counter that remembers state between function calls. Here's the heart of the code. We've defined a function called counter, but this isn't your regular function. It returns another function, and that inner function increments and returns a value called count. Now here's the magic. Count is defined outside the inner function, but the inner function can still access it, and even update it. That's exactly what makes this a closure. The inner function remembers the environment it was created in, in this case, it keeps track of the count variable and returns it. Let's head into the main function. We call counter and assign the returned function to a variable named next. So now, every time we call next, it will increment and return that internal count. Each time we call next, the value of count goes up by 1 and it remembers the previous value. Let's see it running. The output shows how the count increments every time the next function is called. Let's sum it up real quick. First class functions equals assign pass return functions. Function literals equals anonymous functions you define inline. Closures equals functions that carry context from their environment. And that's a wrap for today. You just unlocked a powerful part of Go's functional side. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell for more Golang magic.